Hi everyone, it's Sam. I'm back with another bullet journal weekly of one of my more popular spreads showing a cartoon character looking up at the sky wishing upon a star. So let's get started. So when I originally created this spread in February, I didn't actually record the pencil drawing aspect of creating the picture. So I decided to draw a brand new character from scratch in the same three quarter portrait viewpoint as the one in the spread so that you could get a sense of how to draw these characters. As I've mentioned before, I find cartoon characters in my bullet journal to be a very effective way of conveying emotion and mood and they are very easy to do. I start with my 2H pencil and draw out a square with the help of the dot grid. This square is seven spaces along. Once you have your square, it's easy to create a circle. The circle is what you need to create those all important guidelines. First, you need a central line that shows the direction the face is looking at. The horizontal center line is where the eyebrows would go. Then you mark your hairline near the top of the circle. You repeat the distance between the hairline and the eyebrow line a further two times to get your nose and your chin line. Then you sort of slice off the sides of the circle to create your face shape. This is just a rough guide because obviously each character will look slightly different. So now I'm drawing in the eye line, which sits a third of the way down between the brow line and the base of the nose. The eyes will sit either side of that central downward line, with the side of the face that's further away from you showing a slightly smaller eye compared to this one that is nearer you. I'm just using very simple shapes at the moment as a guide for the eyes and the nose. And as you see, there'll be a lot of trial and error, an awful lot of rubbing out as I work out where I want the features to go. I tend to draw a little diamond shape for the nose when I'm just trying to work out the placement. I just keep all my guidelines in mind. They're barely visible because I've used the 2H pencil and with practice you'll get there. So I'm just popping in the nose and the mouth. I tend to put the mouth line a third of the way down between the nose and the chin. I tend to always draw a nice juicy bottom lip. This is when it comes down to your own personal preferences of the sorts of features you like. I tend to like small chins and a little button nose, larger lips and larger eyes, but it's really up to you. Once I feel I have a good idea of what the face should look like, I switch from my 2H pencil to my mechanical pencil. Everything is linked below, but I tend to use a 0.5mm tip in an HB. I can draw in bolder lines with more confidence because of the guidelines below. I also alter the line weight so that you really get a sense of definition such as thicker eyebrows or eyelashes or the shadows of the mouth and nose. But you can really see how those initial guidelines help you get the direction of the face and the proportions more or less just right before you even start drawing your features. That's why I love using this method. It's also known as the Loomis method, so if you want to ever look that up, it's L-O-O-M-I-S method. So now having broadly finished the face, we're going on to the hair. We know where the hairline should be, so now it's just up to you as to what style you want to do. I've decided that my character is looking out the window at night, looking at the moon and the stars, so she's going to be wearing her hair in plaits as though she's gone to bed. Be pretty much based on myself, because that's what I do. And then I've just given her a simple top for her clothing. Once you have the basics down, you can just add all the character and all the individual elements that make that character more representational of yourself or whatever your mood is. 
So that's pretty much how I drew the original girl. Uh, the only main difference is that I had the original girl looking up more rather than looking straight ahead. You can do that by altering what the placement of the pupils. So now I'm just highlighting where those original guidelines were, just so that you can see how much I use them really. The window frame really was just drawn like this as a sort of cross. And then I added a rough cloud shape and lettering saying wish upon a star. I do have two other videos like the one linked above showing how I draw characters. So do check those out. Anyway, we're now going on to painting the spread. I never like waste, so I just use whatever colours are in the palette drying out. The beauty of gouache is that they can reactivate with water. So I just added French ultramarine to a sort of pinky white that was sitting in the palette to create this very cool sort of lilac. The paint mix is very watery so that I could get that lovely watercolour effect across the whole two page spread. The large square brush really helped with this and this brand of bullet journal copes very well with the watery consistency which is so amazing. I hope you're finding this video to be really useful uh, in terms of how I draw my characters and how I paint and decorate my bullet journal. If you do love this content, then do consider subscribing. I plan to add a bullet journal related video onto this channel at least once a week. Also, I'm going to be reopening my shop, which will have planner stickers and various other stationary goodies. So do keep an eye out for those videos too. They'll just be smaller ones, but the main videos will be like this. So I just added a thick blob of white gouache to the paint mix so that I could create a paler pastel colour that will be for my clouds and my moon. I had gone over my pencil sketch with a permanent Staedtler pen, fine liner black pen, which is why I'm not terribly bothered about painting over those lines because those lines will stay, they'll just be slightly obscured. I'll be able to go over the lines I want to highlight in with brush pens and gel pens later on. So now I'm going to create, divide the next page by creating what looks like a window pane similar to the one with the girl and I use a smaller square brush and my white gouache and just basically paint a cross across the middle. Each section of the page will be for a separate day of the week. I always like large sections in my weekly spreads because I do food diaries and a bit of journaling so I really do use that much of the page just to fill in each day. So this is a cool effect when you want to create a 3D look. So I want the windows to look 3D. So I've mixed a slightly darker blue colour and I'm basically putting in drop shadows all around the window pane. So the window frame itself looks brighter and whiter, comes forward and the blue gives you the shadow. I've also put blue which will act as headers for each day of the week but they'll also represent blinds, curtain blinds in each window pane. It means the whole spread ties in together with the initial sketch of the girl looking out the window and I still have space for all my journaling that I need. As you can see I'm using the hairdryer to dry each section as I paint it so that the paint underneath is not disturbed by whatever I'm adding. So now it's time to paint my character. I just add a blob of scarlet and yellow ochre and mix it with the white. This will help give me a nice peachy colour that I want to use as the base for the face. I use my smallest brush to apply the colour because the face is quite small on the page. When I need to add shading or shadow I just use a deeper concentration of the peach colour for under the eyes and under the chin. I decided to give my character some bold looking hair colour and gave her a red orangey sort of ombre look where the tips of her fringe or bangs, whatever you want to call them, 
look a darker red, a deeper, more fiery red. And then I extended that colour down to the plaits. I just thought she looked really cool and cute. And then this colour I used a darker shade of it to give her the lips. So now I'm using a brush pen from my pastel brush pen set. This is the blue colour to emphasise all those drop shadows and deepen some of those colours. Now I go in with a bolder brush colour pen and that is with a sort of French ultramarine blue to outline the cloud, do the lettering and outline the girl's top. I then outline the windows with a sort of broken line using the same pen. It's a great way of outlining your features like the window pane, but it doesn't overpower the picture too much. I chose a lovely aqua blue for her top and for her eye colours and that would contrast with the red hair colour. And now I'm back in with the Staedtler permanent pen to go over any lines around the moon and the clouds that I felt got obscured completely. Then I added a touch of yellow for the stars. I'll be going over that with the white gel pen so that the yellow will just look like an outer glow. I'm just going around all the window frames with my pastel pen just to create the illusion of wood grain going around all the window frames. In hindsight I always wish I did this in a dark blue fine liner rather than the black permanent pen but I'm just creating the sections really so that I could write in the days of the week and then I'm using a bit of washi tape to cover up the mis the incorrect date at the top of the page and then just messing around really seeing how I like the look I always like writing in which week of the year it is on my weekly spreads and then the date. So that's what you see me doing there. And then filling it in with that strong blue brush pen, which is from the second set. They're all linked in the video description below. And this is where I go over all the stars with the white gel pen, my favourite thing. Uh, and it shows the gold that I put there with the brush pen just as a sort of outer glow. And then I use the white gel pen to add additional decoration. So I put a crescent moon and an additional stars wherever I'm going to pop the days of the week. It just unites the whole spread together and gives it a really beautiful aesthetic. And there you have it, my Wish Upon a Star weekly spread, one of my absolute favourites and it certainly has proven to be popular on social media so it's a real pleasure sharing this with you. I hope you enjoy this video and come back next week for another bite-sized bullet journal weekly. Bye for now!